It's Monday. It's April 24th. And the word of the day is Kalsarakani. Another great one from my favorite lexicologist, Susie Dent. It's a Finnish word that means drinking at home alone in your underwear. Using the sentence, I got a disturbing number of messages about Kalsarakani that all basically said, Wow, personal attack from Susie against you, Heath. (laughs) He's saving on laundry by not spilling Baileys on his shirts anymore. You should be thanking him, Susie. Yes. Well, and, and to be fair, of all the places Heath drinks alone in his underwear, this is the one that gets us the fewest complaints. Anyway, exactly. also a good point. <laughs> I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, the Supreme Court puts evil on pause. Belgium proves you don't have to be a bigot to destroy beer for stupid reasons. <laughs> and bad people lose so much goddamn money That's last more than week. half Indeed the show. Do. That's more than half the show this week. <laughs> but first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, No Illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, before we get started, happy... New Kids on the Block Day. Ooh. That's right. New, I, I never listened to New Kids on the Block. <laughs> I didn't have a, a favorite. It wasn't Jordan. Like you you had a favorite. Your okay. favorite was Jordan. Okay. <laughs> and at the other end of the spectrum, when New Kids on the Block were popular, I was quite literally a new kid on the block because I was being born. Mm-hmm. I was being born. Sure. I'm a Donnie Wahlberg guy. Anyway, mm. before we get started, quick announcement. We got a Detroit show coming up for God Awful Movies in July, and we sold a little faster than we expected on the Platinum Night, so we're doing Iridium Night. Eli, you got the details on Iridium? Indeed. So instead of Friday before the show, Iridium takes place Thursday before the show, but it's the same amount of fun, same games, same hanging out with us. One might even say better hanging out with us. You get a virginal, fresher, fresher, more awake, more full of vim and vigor, Mm -hmm. and you can find all that info as well as the tickets. I don't know why I added... (laughs) A uh, yeah, Vim like and a vigor. Chris, Chris Anderson interview there. At the end. Sounds like we're gonna fuck them now. You make it it's sound like we're very gonna fuck much. Everybody. Well, the fuck Iridium them. night is a sex night. It's official. It's not yep. that because that's illegal. I don't know that it's that's illegal the only in Detroit, reason no it's illusions. not that. I would be to be clear. We want to fuck you. We're just not allowed if, to charge you money. If you that. had seen the Google Street View of the first theater we chose, it is definitely not <laughs> illegal in Detroit. <laughs> You can find all that info and get the tickets at godawfulmovieslive.com, but those will sell out probably in the next couple of days, so don't wait. Get on it. All right. In our lead story tonight, if you're keeping score at home, it's Fox News Zero and a dead Venezuelan guy, (laughs) 787.5 million. Hmm. That is the score in points right now. (laughs) Thanks to a defamation lawsuit filed by Dominion Voting Systems regarding the coverage of the 2020 election, Fox News had to officially address the provable fact that their business model is lying to stupid people. And in terms of this particular topic, the lie was big. It's called the big lie. They lied like super bigly. So after careful consideration, Fox News agreed to spend seven hundred eighty seven point five million dollars in a settlement To avoid having to speak honestly about Fox News. Right. Yeah, no, that's an important distinction, right? They didn't pay three quarters of a billion dollars because they lied. They paid it so that they wouldn't have to tell the truth. That's just that's a big difference. (laughs) and It's worth emphasizing. Yeah. Think about how guilty you have to be to be a giant billion dollar media company with your own team of on call for hire lawyers and think. Yeah, this isn't worth going to court. I don't this think it would be a court. defamation suit, no less. A media company getting sued for defamation. That's it's, such a slam dunk. It's 90. Yeah. I love like this. If Puzzle in a Thunderstorm sacrificed $787 billion instead of using microphones. <laughs> <laughs> so we heard about the story thanks to, of course, thousands of news alerts. Along with a mystical item I got from a sorceress familiar called the Klaxon of Consequences. Ah, But uh, also, big thanks to Don Honey, who was the first one to email about it. And Don would like his name mentioned in a a Spanish accent, apparently. Uh, Eli, you want to do a Don Honey in Spanish? One whole day. Okay. (laughs) And there we go. So going forward, we just set up a new email for Skeptocrat. You can send us links for the Skeptocrat at skeptocratnews at gmail.com if you find a good story. So 
Always nice to hear that klaxon, which does not go off anywhere near enough. Mm -hmm. But I was rooting for a trial instead of a settlement, honestly. I wanted every single Fox News person under oath being forced to say things out loud from their stupid fucking faces. Sadly, that's not going to happen. I, honestly, I don't even think the court read my dunking booth full of urine suggestion email, and it no, hurts. No, ba based on the <laughs> cease and desist, I can tell you they definitely read it. Yeah, I feel oh. like they read it. I feel like they read it. <laughs> so... The big reason we're getting a settlement instead of a trial is because the Dominion Board of Directors and its owners are cowards. But okay, I'm mad about this, but in fairness, they already did a bunch of damage. Yes. They did good work with this whole thing leading up to it. During the discovery process, we got to see text messages from just about every major news anchor from Fox, and they all said something along the lines of, yeah, so Trump and his legal team are fucking crazy people who are very clearly lying. Are we... Really going to be supporting this? Uh, yes, because lying is our brand. Got it. Sorry. Yeah, stupid question. <laughs> right. So that was fun that we got to see all that already. Yeah. Our company, Text Thread, is mostly fighting about whether it's this or next Friday. Yeah. I, I, sure. I feel like Heath will eventually sue us over that, though. I, that I that will be adjudicated <laughs> in a court of law. I think it might. Next is a word that has a meaning. Okay. <laughs> I'll give Dominion credit. That's you. That's a point against your side. No, it, it, it's not. Never. You know what? Not here on the air. So, <laughs> not here on the air. I'm going to give Dominion credit for another thing. It's for winning at chicken, too. The settlement happened last fucking minute. Fox News tried to play chicken, but Dominion was like, fine, great. No, let's go to trial. You fucking idiots. Let's definitely go to trial. We'd love to do that. But then the trial was finally starting, and Fox had to run away like a middle school bully who actually got met with resistance, being like, fuck, ti okay, time out. I I'll stop if you stop. I'll stop if you stop. I'll give you $787 million <laughs> to stop. And with that offer, Dominion was facing basically a legal bribe. That's what a settlement is. So, mm -hmm. Just a Dominion executive sitting next to a Sandy Hook parent on a solid gold jumbo jet. Excuse me, do I know you? <laughs> I feel like... <laughs> So Dominion had to weigh a giant payout right now, money in hand, against the value of maybe winning a larger sum. Plus, they had to consider the added cost of continuing to pay their legal team during the trial. And again, they could always lose, although that seems kind of unlikely after the judge said it was, quote, crystal clear that statements made by Fox News on the air were false. Oh, dude, but, that, that judge was just dunking on them left and right. Yes. Yeah, no, this is, a, this is a fun judge. Please don't but, take the deal. Please don't yeah, take right. the deal. But here's the thing. Dominion would have had to prove intentionality to win the defamation claim, which is a bit trickier. And yes, the value of damaging Fox News even more than they already did by forcing a trial is enormous in, like, grand ethical terms. And honestly, in pornographic terms for me. Mm -hmm. But it's not a big part of a business decision about taking the legal bribe. Yeah, right. Well, we also have to consider, though, the very real possibility that Fox would have lost, appealed, lost on appeal, and then appealed to the goddamn SCOTUS who would then craft some stupid specific fucking ruling allowing Fox to forever after lie about stolen elections, right? It's, it, we're, yeah. it's at least worth tempering our frustration with that possibility. Sure, that's the worst case right there. We're not getting well, that. And, and so, this SCOTUS good. like seems to want to change the standard here, too. They'd fucking love to. Good point. So here's my favorite part. The settlement came out on Tuesday, and of course, Fox News continued being a so-called news channel. So ever since, we got to see these anchors do their shows without saying a goddamn word yes. about their entire <laughs> operation being a giant embarrassment. Right after the news broke about the settlement, from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Tuesday night, Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram, and Sean Hannity, all of whom were exposed as big fat liars during the discovery, they did their big fat liar shows without a single mention of the settlement. Yes, it's it's like, and in legal news, uh, nothing happened. It's so weird. There's the whole, <laughs> the whole big old country, nothing illegal. Stop looking at me with this camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Instead of covering the giant piece of news that every legitimate news channel was covering, the Fox News team covered extremely important stories of their own, like, for example, a made-up fear that climate activists are attacking, I think, the existence of rice, according yeah, to Fox what? News. Yeah. Yeah. I put a couple screenshots in the notes because I could not <laughs> stop laughing when I saw these. Like, really, I laughed for so long. So... What I'm showing you here is a Fox News guy lying about whatever the fuck with a picture of a bowl of rice next to him and a banner that says 
Rice is a versatile grain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then this, the same guy next to a picture of paella this time, and it says, Paella and risotto are classic rice dishes. <laughs> this is our news today. Sorry, uh, Heath, I hate to give notes on air, but that, that reading is very clearly, paella and risotto are classic rice dishes. <laughs> yeah, it was way more panicky that moment, yes. Uh, but see, this is what Fox News is left with when they're not allowed to lie, y'all. They j- rejected Snapple facts, right? <laughs> yeah, they basically have to do Snapple facts, like, forever now. So during Sean Hannity's Tuesday Night Show... They focused on the Biden administration spending too much money on stuff to help people, which is basically the entire idea of organized human society, yep. whatever. And again, the best part of this was the Chiron. While trying to avoid talking about the $787.5 million settlement, we got to see Sean Hannity's stupid face with a banner right next to him that said, the price of incompetence. <laughs> Oh, man, it's a good thing they avoided embarrassment by paying $787 yeah, right? million. Dollars, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, sadly, we don't get to watch the trial porn, but we still got a pretty good idea of what Fox News would have had to say just based on the willingness to settle. Right. Without even going to trial, they agreed to pay the single largest defamation settlement in American history. If they went to trial and won... It would have been a great thing to brag about to their stupid listeners and used to bolster their reputation. And even if they lost, the judge might have awarded Dominion way less than the full $1.6 billion they were seeking. Which means, even in the best case scenario for Fox, they knew that absolutely nothing good would happen in the big truth-talking room. <laughs> yep. So they weaseled out with a settlement of $787.5 million. And on that extremely, extremely happy note, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Hey, podcast listener. You know, stress can do more than just bum you out. It can affect your mental health and well-being, just like today's mystery guest. Call me Bike Lindell. Bike isn't a name. Yes, it is. It's what they call the little thin cars. Yeah, uh, okay. A- anyway, yeah, this is Bike Lindell, and he's had a rough week. I sure have, Noah. I sure have. Well, Bike, have you tried BetterHelp Online Therapy? Probably not. What is that? If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So, for example, you had to pay a guy $5 million and it was really stressing you out. Yeah, no, yeah, a therapist could help you with that. Because they have hundreds of millions of dollars? No, no, but they will let you talk about it. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skepticrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Skepticrat. You want a lumpy pillow? No, no, I don't, Bike Lindell. No, I don't. $70. And we're back. Next up in headlines, in tough pill to swallow news, the Supreme Court did a good thing. Mm. Kinda. For a minute. Yeah, we'll see. But definitely good. And yes, I am just as surprised as you are, podcast listener. But this past Friday, they froze a lower court ruling that placed restrictions on the use and distribution of an abortion pill. Yeah, and and again, it's just for now. The order was unsigned, so they refused to even explain why they're, like, temporarily not evil about this one little thing. And we don't know who voted for what. All we know is that Thomas and Alito each wrote a dissent explaining, basically, yeah, just to be clear, the two of us, we're still fucking garbage and we're going to circle back to this as soon as we get the chance so that we can be yeah. garbage yeah. In, a, in a full case. No, t- fucking Alito's dissent was just a let's get you to bed grandpa level rant. It was like distressingly <laughs> unhinged. It was it was so unhinged that I feel the need to specify that it was unhinged even after you knew it was Alito dissenting on the subject of abortion, <laughs> right? Yeah. 
So if you listen to our sister show, Scathing Atheist, you know that the federal judge who made this ruling did so under the fucking Comstock Act of 18. Nobody should listen to a word I'm saying. (laughs) And as almost every major media outlet has pointed out, this ruling was riddled with so many inaccuracies and contradictions that if the Supreme Court had upheld it, they might have gotten fucking attacked by bizarro superman (laughs) and by the way if you're not familiar with the comstock act check that out if you want a visual representation of our current legal system of 2023 just google anthony comstock that's it that's what we look like yeah exactly so i want to be clear just because this ruling was absurd doesn't mean that there wasn't a good chance they were going to hold it up so we were rightfully terrified this week but i mentioned this because as has been the case with the Supreme Court many times, it's not necessarily about not being an evil piece of shit. It's about needing a coherent enough evil piece of shit to uphold so they don't give away the game they think we're all still falling for, which we're not, and and they don't really care if we do. But still, it's something, huh? They they didn't do the well, thing. Uh, and uh, Sam Alito is probably writing a boomer screed descent to that paragraph right now. But for but for the rest of them, yeah, well, maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe not Tom. And of course, as Noah has hinted, there are some members of the court who don't give a shit what anybody thinks because they're just boiled tar the person. I'm talking, of course, about Samuel Alito, who suggested that allowing the restrictions to remain in place would not lead to, quote, any real harm during the presumably short period at issue, end quote. What? Not adding, come on, Eli, you know what grocery store I probably shop at. Do you want your life to matter or not? Right. And Eli, if you do it quickly, any real harm would only be a short period, right? <laughs> he, called, he called it. I'm fine he called with it. it. Well, you know, for reals, you could read his dissent and, and all it's like no real harm shit and conclude that he has never heard of pregnant women. Right? Yep. Like, it is genuinely that bad. <laughs> Anyway, all of this is good news for now. Who the hell knows what the future holds? The theocratic wing of the court is definitely going to get more and more desperate the closer to the election we get. So this is no time to relax or let our guard down. But if you're a person who might get pregnant and need an abortion in the future, I highly recommend stocking up on abortion pills in whatever way is legal, because at least for now, you can. Yeah, right. And in muskrat news tonight, I should never be having a better week than the world's richest person or fucking third richest, but whatever he's down to. Now, the the point is that shouldn't even be possible. And yet something tells me that if both Elon Musk and I had been fitted with like fucking happyometers last week, I would have outscored the shit out of him on Thursday and Friday. Because, He's having such a bad week. Oh my God. In the course of a <laughs> few days, Musk saw a 20% drop in the earnings from Tesla's first quarter earnings report, a $13 billion drop in his net worth, a letter from key uh-uh. Tesla shareholders asking what the fuck he even does there, a fresh new set of controversies at Twitter, and his rocket blew up. Okay, this is all a cartoon in my head. In my head, almost all that happened. And then he pulled out like a roll of Mentos and smiled at a camera that wasn't there. And then his Acme rocket blew up right in his face. And he was like, fuck, really? Wow. Yeah, it's like we're we're on the final season and they're trying to give him way too much comeuppance at this point or something. Yeah. So (laughs) then he walks to a corner, gets splashed by a puddle as a car goes by. (laughs) Fuck. So, okay, so we're going to start with Tesla, where about a billion and a half dollars worth of shareholders pointed out that not only has Elon Musk overextended with all his Twitter bullshit, but he also sucks at his job. And and while the letter was no doubt prompted by a steep decline in stock prices over the past month, the issues it highlighted were mostly about Tesla's increasingly disturbing pattern of human rights and workers' rights abuses. It, it, It recounts the numerous lawsuits against the company for racial discrimination, wage theft, sexual harassment, unsafe working conditions, and union busting. It also points out that Tesla is now facing criminal probes by the Justice Department, the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration, and the California Department of Motor Vehicles. Criminal fucking probes over its autopilot technology and its bullshit claims about self driving. Right. And instead of, you know, working to solve any of the underlying problems, Musk has responded with derogatory tweets. Dude, you built the Ed Hardy shirt of cars. Mm-hmm. You should not be surprised by any <laughs> of this true. failure. That's true. And look, as someone who has very often wanted to solve our company problems with defamation, I get it. <laughs> but you got to get yourself 
a Noah and a Heath, Elon. They outvote you. It, it, it right. really helps, man. Well, it's and that's good. what the letter was. You know, the letter was like it was t- to the board saying, hey, you're supposed to be the fucking Noah and Heath here. <laughs> now, so this letter came, of course, just as Tesla's first quarter earnings report came in, showing a 20% drop in net income compared to the first quarter of last year. Uh, but that report, it's like, actually, it's way worse than just that. See, Tesla's been slashing prices to bring their bloated MSRPs like more in line with comparable electric vehicles from their competitors which has devoured their margins. And this is coming at a time when they're ramping up production and selling fewer cars, which <laughs> never a great combination. Supply side economics by, right. by Elon and, Musk. Um, but, <laughs> but all this news, of course, set share prices tumbling by almost 10% on Friday, closing at just shy of nine times their value when Eli told you to sell all your Tesla stock, which, to be clear, is though is less than half their peak in November of 2021. Okay, okay, my bad. But to be fair, at least my car isn't going to stop working like the fucking ESPN phone in two years. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> so, but the company is so profitable. Yeah, because it's not unionized, you jackass. <laughs> um, and- I think Tesla's done so bad that they made Eli Wright actually about that. <laughs> like, yeah. they've, they've done so badly that he's now made a correct stock prediction. If I made that. a financial decision and you proved it right, something has yeah. gone, You've yeah. gone yeah. terribly <laughs> wrong. Right, yeah. We can dedicate a whole story story about how bad your week was <laughs> i texted heath and noah about a non-existent tax law this morning nobody's reality <laughs> should ever intersect with mine so and uh, uh, by the way on the same day that tesla's stock price was self-destructing so was spacex's latest rocket uh, now as the resident space nerd i feel the need to point out up front that as far as rockets exploding minutes after clearing the launch tower goes um this is actually a pretty good one uh, well, it's I'm I'm not going to buy into the official company line that this gigantic midair explosion was a success. It's also not right to classify it as a failure, uh, e- even though I kind of want to in keeping with the theme of my overall story. But in truth, the goal here really was just to get the damn thing off the launch pad and see how it went, and and they did see that. Okay, but given Elon's week, somebody should check on Big Bird, who might have died. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, by I'm which no I mean Twitter. Oh, Big Bird's yeah. Twitter might have died. <laughs> Now, look, I'm no resident space expert, but I feel like if your standard is get it off the launch pad and then whatever else happens doesn't matter, your standards are too low. Well, your standards are too <laughs> low. Yeah, well, th- look, I'm I'm sure they'd much rather that five of the engines didn't just randomly stop firing, and I'm sure they'd have preferred it if the rocket had successfully separated from the booster at some point, and I'm sure they'd have slept easier if they hadn't had to hit the self-destruct button four minutes after the launch and turn the thing into a $100 million firecracker, but if you watch the launch, you'll notice that like the control room was cheering when it blew up. That isn't corporate spin, right? No, nobody ran in there and demanded that everybody act happy for the cameras. They actually did succeed in the main goals for the day, uh, and they d- admitted beforehand that there was a very low probability that they were going to recover the rocket on this one. So as trite as it sounds, this one really was about gathering launch data, and when, once it clears the tower, there's no more launch data to be had. Okay, well then I would like to remind our audience and any Supreme Court justices I live near that I too deeply care about lunch data. It's lunch data. Lunch. Yep, love it. I so, care okay. about it deeply. <laughs> okay. But that's what I'm firing at. But one explosion that can definitely be classified as a failure is the one over on Twitter where Musk decided to start being coy about which accounts were and weren't government propaganda. (laughs) This is absurd. (laughs) In an effort to solve literally no problem whatsoever, he apparently made the 3 a.m. decision to start labeling news organizations that receive any funding whatsoever from governments as state-affiliated media. That the, the same label they use for blatant propaganda like Russia's RT or China's Global Times. This led to widespread protests, including NPR's decision to leave the site entirely and a number of other news agencies threatening to do the same. So Musk backtracked a bit and he changed the label from state affiliated to government funded, uh, which still suggests that the government is making editorial decisions, which isn't true for things like fucking PBS and the BBC. Also, everything is state affiliated. They exist right, yes. in a country. They have employees <laughs> using roads and cops and firemen. They're on the internet thanks to Al Gore and DARPA. Right. It's called society. <laughs> That's what you're describing. Like, what What does he think is a good one? He only trusts 
off the grid social media? What does that even mean? <laughs> now, of course, Musk is entirely unable to just admit that he'd made a dumb decision. Uh, or, or, or sorry, he's unable to admit that the other people who already made that decision got it right. So when it became clear that even the government funded label wasn't going to fly, he simply removed all references to state affiliation. Which means that, 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 that now Twitter no longer labels known propaganda as propaganda. Because, you know, the real problem with Twitter was that it was too easy to tell if you were dealing with a legitimate source. Yeah, I mean, step one, are you on Twitter? Yeah, uh, right. See, there's your issue, right? <laughs> okay, what if we sell a subscription service for true things with a green <laughs> check mark? If you right, have a true yeah. thing, you apply, you pay, and then you get the check. Well, yeah, speaking of which, while we're on the subject of Twitter's increasingly opaque veracity, I should also point out that at the same time all this shit was going on, the, the, the fucking blatant propaganda warning was being removed, Musk also implemented his long-threatened removal of legacy blue check marks from the site. That was the final vestige of reliability on Twitter. <laughs> this is, of course, all part of his misguided effort to sell people on the Twitter subscription service where you can buy verification. So, yes, in an effort to make the blue check mark appear more valuable to potential customers, he removed its usefulness. <laughs> because, you know, he's a business genius thinking in more dimensions than my brain is even capable of. Yeah. Oh, and because we live in the time dimension, in between Noah writing this story on Saturday <laughs> and us recording this story on Sunday, Musk offered a million dollars to anyone who could prove his dad owned an emerald mine. And his dad told the press on the record that he would like to take <laughs> yes! that. Yes. Yes. Oh, Mike Lindell was like, I can prove it. Fuck. Yes. Ah, <laughs> needed that. Well, yes, and, and this morning, uh, the Washington Post reported that Twitter Blue had just verified accounts for Kobe Bryant, Anthony Bourdain, and Chadwick Boseman. So, yeah, it's a oh. fucking late-breaking story. Wow. I hate to see it. And in champagne in the ass news. Well done, if, Eli. Excellent. Well thank done. you. Thank you. If you've been paying attention to the news lately, you know that there have been quite a few right-wing beer protests of late. Right-wing idiots across our nation have spent the last month exploding, shooting, and even exposing to Kid Rock various amounts of Budweiser to show their displeasure with their partnership with a queer spokesperson. And that's all very silly. But there's one beer bash we here at the Skeptocrat can get behind because this past week, Belgian Customs crushed... 2,352 cans of Miller High Life because they were, quote, improperly labeled as champagne. <laughs> so, okay. it's, but it's Miller. Some would argue that it was improperly labeled as beer, okay? To be, to be clear, they didn't crush them like drank them. They no. like smushed them. <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. Because no. like Miller is like, oh, that's a crushable beer. That's like a term. No, they <laughs> smashed it with like a press. Now, I know what you're thinking, podcast listener. Eli. Was there a very intricate mistake at the label factory? Seems like that might be kind of hard to mislabel just over 16 gross cans of beer. But no, no, no. The labels were on purpose. The issue Belgian Customs took was with Miller High Life's slogan, the champagne of beer. This yes. is so stupid. Do they not have the of concept in like <laughs> Flemish or just Belgium in general? <laughs> Are they smashing up pallets of Budweiser because it doesn't have a royal bloodline to be the, in fact, <laughs> king of beers? What the fuck is happening? Yeah, Belgians are going to be downright traumatized when they learn that the Australian word for beer is beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it gets better. Maybe you're thinking, OK, Eli, that must be like one hard ass at customs who went rogue and like got the crusher going before anyone could stop him. Huh? Mm -hmm. Nope. The move came after a trade association for the champagne industry complained officially. And after the beer was destroyed, the managing director, Charles Guamau, said, quote, It confirms the importance that the European Union attaches to designations of origin and rewards the determination of the inhabitants of Champagne to protect their designation, end quote. Oh, for fuck's sake, <laughs> it's not a Cornish pasty unless it has yellow turnips in it, the national policy. Okay. Yeah. Also... If your champagne company was losing business to Miller fucking High Life, <laughs> that, that's a you problem. Yep. I don't think customs should have to step in. <laughs> Sipping on some Dom Perignon. This doesn't taste anything like horse urine. <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, uh, based on this story and this story alone, I'm headed out on the road with a flamethrower and a ruler to see just how famous Junior's Cheesecake is after all. So <laughs> if you see me in the Chiron, just let them know I was doing it for Belgian standards. <laughs> exactly. About a place in France. Yeah. And finally tonight, in Now Lie It at News, Fox News wasn't the only election denier that was ordered to pay a fuck ton of money for lying so stupidly last week because Mike the Fart Protector Lindell of my pillow fame, among other things, was just ordered in arbitration to make good on the $5 million that he promised to anyone who could prove that the data he had didn't show that China stole the 2020 presidential <laughs> election from Trump. I'm so happy. Ooh, ooh. Was it his dad? Please tell me it's his dad. <laughs> Eli, it would be hard for this story to get better, but yes, that would have made it better. No, it wasn't his dad. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, as you'll recall, in the aftermath of Trump's 2020 loss, Mike Lindell was among the loudest boosters of Trump's discredited conspiracy theories. He launched a 24-hour streaming TV service dedicated to amplifying said conspiracies. He also produced two feature-length YouTube tirades on the subject, which you can hear all about on God Awful Movies episode 287 and 297, and which he also called docu-movies because I, he doesn't oh. know what either half of that portmanteau means apparently <laughs> i don't even own a boat what do you mean port? <laughs> and, and the crux of all of this is that he had because computer- okay. yeah right <laughs> sorry <laughs> no because port yeah so dock and port no oh, yeah. all- so no and, and the crux of all of this is that he had computer data that proved the election was stolen so so much so that the first movie was actually called Absolute Proof. And and he kept showing us in the movie his proof, but it was just random shit on a computer screen. Well, apparently, in an effort to quiet the doubters who kept saying, yeah, man, that's just random shit on a computer screen, he issued a $5 million challenge to anybody who could discredit his proof. And then literally anyone looked at it and said... Yeah, man, this is just some random shit on a computer screen. And now it looks like Mike Lindell is legit going to have to give that dude $5 million. Fantastic. Uh, Also, he owes us $5 million because we also proved him wrong just by watching absolute proof. Yeah. We just looked at it. (laughs) Disproved it. I was going to say, ergo propto hoc, how bad was this movie? Pay up, Mike. Come on. We we got there first. So the dude in question is a clear and obvious piece of shit, okay? He's just less of a piece of shit than Mike Lindell. He's a 63-year-old computer forensics expert named Robert Seidman from Nevada who described himself as a reasonable and moderate conservative. Okay. But, boo. Well, but he voted for Trump twice. Double boo. Also a liar. Right. So yeah, even if you're inclined to accept the unproven existence of a reasonable fucking conservative in today's America, he ain't one of them. Nobody can simultaneously be reasonable or moderate and have voted for Trump after seeing what Trump was. But he was reasonable enough to know that the election conspiracy shit was a lie. So when Lindell promised to release the data to any of the fucking literally his words here, any of the cyber people who could analyze it. <laughs> I forgot he said yeah. that. I forgot that he said cyber people. Zeeban took cyber- a people (laughs) yeah so Ziedman a qualified cyber person took him up on the offer and 15 days after receiving the data he issued a 15 page report that concluded by saying quote I have proven that the data Lindell provides unequivocally does not contain packet data of any kind and do not contain any information related to the November 2020 (laughs) election end quote is this a subway club card (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he sent me a subway. It doesn't even have any stamps. That's uh, that's nothing, to be clear. That's nothing. Oh, man. This is like when Godzilla fights King Kong, but neither of these people are anywhere close to as likable as yeah, Godzilla right, right. or King Kong. Now, the funniest <laughs> thing about this whole situation, though, is just how low a bar Lindell set for himself. Now, of course, as we learned in multiple faux documentaries, his claim was that he had absolute proof, his words, that China interfered with our election in the form of what appeared to be fucking flight tracking maps. But (laughs) when he issued his $5 million challenge, it wasn't offered to people who could prove that his proof didn't show Chinese election interference. Instead, the challenge was, and I'm quoting from the rules of the fucking contest here, quote, to prove that the data Lindell provides does not reflect information related to the November 2020 election, what? end quote. He's so stupid. Yeah. No, he wasn't <laughs> betting $5 million that he could prove China hacked our election, but rather he bet $5 million that he could provide 
Any data whatsoever related to the 2020 presidential election. And he, and this has to be said in full italics, failed to clear that bar. He yeah, missed. legally. Right. And to be clear how fucking insane this is, I just have to emphasize, you can get the presidential election data. Yes. It's free. Right. He did not have to bluff. No. <laughs> okay. After the subway thing, he sent me another package. This time it was a shoot of bamboo. It just says Chinese bamboo in <laughs> Sharpie. Still no, there's still nothing. <laughs> okay. So what was Lindell's so-called absolute proof? Well, according to Ziedman, he was given a, a flow chart that shows how elections work, an encrypted list of random IP addresses, and what appeared to be, in his professional estimation, several pages of random numbers and letters. <laughs> his lawyer described it in arbitration as containing, quote, no recognizable data in any known format. <laughs> End quote. <laughs> and best part, best part about this shit, I guarantee goddamn to you that Mike Lindell paid for this data. 100% he sure did. did. Yeah, 100%. He, he almost certainly, literally, I literally mean this, he almost certainly handed over a briefcase full of cash to a dude <laughs> in sunglasses and a fucking trench coat, and then it was just fucking... <laughs> ASCII art Star Wars printed out <laughs> yeah. or some shit. Almost exactly that absolutely must have happened. So from now on in my life, I'll be spending most of my time delivering the digits of pi to Mike Lindell <laughs> in different fun formats. <laughs> Tell him to meet me at abandoned warehouses all over the country with like carnations and little things. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'll spend my time, by the way, winning $5 million bets that this data is just the digits of pi. It'll be fun. Now, of course... Lindell has vowed to appeal the arbitrator's ruling, but that's not really a thing. It's fucking arbitration. What's more, it's arbitration that he set up the fucking rules for. So there's no appeals court here. The best he can do, apparently, is ask a federal judge to quash the otherwise legally binding decision because it represents a manifest injustice. But it's super rare for any judge to do that at all. And given the facts of this case, I think it's about as likely as you finding a my pillow on my fucking bed. So yeah, five million dollars down, and he's still got a pending one point two billion dollar lawsuit yeah. from Dominion to look forward to. <laughs> I was gonna say one way for Mike to get out of this lawsuit is being several hundred thousand pillow empires in debt to Dominion by the time <laughs> he has to pay up. So perfect. One simple trick. <laughs> all right fantastic fantastic week the horrible people lost so many times on that note we're going to close it out thanks to no illusions thanks to eli bosnick and thanks to all the listeners who liked us on facebook followed us on twitter and sent us feedback on the other various internets please keep doing that please keep listening and please keep telling your friends and if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat just like taranga Leela. One with Nothing, The Hey Elliot Podcast, Cornish Best, Brendan from New Zealand, a business law firm, female-owned law firm in upstate South Carolina, M, Diana Sievert Wood, Dustin, Zombie Nerd 42, Stefan Woick, Michael McElroy, Kristen Gulling Smith, Intiminator, is that what you think they're going for there? Yeah. Intiminator, Intiminator, Fried Goo, Ted Gregg, Roger, and Guys, please go get help for your memory issues. You keep forgetting what your repeat sponsors are. <laughs> exclamation. <laughs> what? Because I don't just know what. Pod, no, because like what's better help? That kind of that thing. Oh, oh that's oh, very yes. funny. No, it's that, a pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pause. We get there eventually. It's, it's, it's a, a, no. no, that's that's a very funny. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good job. Good I job. was <laughs> deeply insulted by that. When I read it in our notes. <laughs> we know who they are. Who eventually. <laughs> We get checked in the Is this because ZipRecruiter canceled their ads for the rest of the year? Are you rubbing that in? <laughs> yeah, it felt personal, right? It did, right? Okay, no, but it was, a, it was a good joke. We just didn't get it. Okay, Noah got it. He figured it out. All right. <laughs> Point being, everybody I just listed, you are all beautiful, beautiful people. Yet beauty is but a vain and doubtful good, a shining gloss that fadeth suddenly, a flower that dies when first it gins to bud. A brittle glass that's broken presently. But you also gave us money, and that's inner beauty, mm -hmm. so you don't have to worry yeah. about that sonnet exactly. or whatever I was just reading from Shakespeare. Exactly. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, 
If you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penist. Special thanks to Ryan Slonick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. On this week's episode, the Supreme Court puts... <laughs> someone yelled at me. They were like, I don't like it that you squeak on the on. So there, that's for you, motherfucker. The Supreme Court puts evil on... Let me do a real one in case you don't think yeah, that's funny. Yeah. I feel like if you took the data <laughs> that Mike Lindell had and like ran it into chat GPT, it would be like, are you Mike Lindell? Stop doing what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> it would know. Yeah, this is Bike Lindell, and he's had a rough week. I sure have, Noah. I sure have. Well, Bike, have you tried BetterHelp Online Therapy? Probably not. What is that? If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp... (laughs) (laughs) The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023.